Hey, what's up guys? I'm Joe from Cyclops Videos. This is the first time you've been here. I appreciate you watching my videos. All right, let's get started with the basics. I won't be talking about red dot pistol scopes, night vision, thermal, or digital scopes. I'm only gonna be talking about scopes that magnify through glass, through lenses. So I'll only be focusing on the optical type scopes, whether they're fixed power or variable power. We'll get to that in just a second. All right, let's look at some of the parts on the scope, starting around the eyepiece. Now on every scope out there, there's gonna be an adjustable eyepiece of some kind. What the eyepiece does, the adjustment on it, is it helps get the reticle in focus, nothing else. Moving forward from the eyepiece is the magnification ring. That's where you can turn it to its lowest power or all the way up to its highest power or anywhere in between. Now in front of that is the tube. The tube normally will come in either one inch, 30 millimeter, 34 millimeter. The 1 inch 30 and 34 will probably cover 99% of the scopes out there. Now in front of that is the saddle of the scope. That's where the turrets are and that's where the side focus is. If you have a scope that has a side focus, here's where you'll find it. And a lot of times that's where you'll find the illumination button will be on the left hand side of the scope. Now the turrets are what actually adjust the scope. When you get ready to move a scope, what you're doing by turning the turrets, think of it like you're dialing two calipers that are coming into a tube inside there and the tube is moving against springs. As you adjust the caliper, the internal tube will move. As it moves, it adjusts the point of impact downrange. This, what moves is the internal part of the scope. That's what allows you to get to zero. And in front of that is where the objective is on the scope. Now the objective on some scopes is adjustable. What that does, it helps clear up the focus and eliminate parallax. That's something else we'll get to in just a minute. Uh -huh. Now one thing you'll wanna know when you get ready to look at a scope is whether or not it's second focal plane or first focal plane. This is really simple. The way a second focal plane scope works is the reticle stays constant as you adjust the magnification up and down. It'll stay constant. On the first focal plane, what you see down range, the way the reticle lines up on the target, as you turn the magnification up and down, the reticle stays exactly the same. It grows with the target. The benefit of a first focal plane is you can make calibrated adjustments and you know it's going to be precise. The downside to a first focal plane is on the lowest part of the magnification, it can be really, really hard to pick up the reticle because it's shrinking. With the second focal plane, it stays the same, but you don't have the same type of references. You may have reference points in there, but they may only work at one magnification. On those type of scopes, usually there's a dot to let you know this is the magnification it's calibrated at. Now magnification and resolution, they're two different things. The magnification is how large the target appears to get as you turn the magnification ring on the scope. Pretty simple, right? Resolution is a totally different thing. Resolution is how clear the image is. We've, you can only magnify an image so much, regardless if it's optical or digital, before you'll just start losing resolution. All right, fixed versus variable power. The advantages are with a fixed power scope, there's less lenses inside the scope. So everything else being equal, it's gonna be lighter. And because the image is going through less lenses, there's less chance of the image getting all distorted and screwed up. With the variable power scope, if you think you can get by with a four to 12, with a three to nine, with a two to seven, do that. It'll be lighter, it'll be shorter, and the image will be a lot better. Scope focus, there's basically three things to think about. One, the eyepiece. The eyepiece focuses the reticle only. The other two things is either it's not gonna have a side focus or front focus, or it will have one. The benefit of having a side focus or front focus, it helps get the image down range that much sharper. But what it's really for is to eliminate parallax. A lot of guys get way too deep into this. What it is very simply is that the reticle, when you look through the scope, is not on the same focal plane, even if it's focused, as the image you're looking through the scope. So if you shift your head in any way, the image down range will appear to shift. When they are on the same focal plane, you can move your head around and the reticle will stay centered exactly where you had it. When you get it like that, it's time to start unleashing some rounds because if you do set up a little bit different shot to shot, you're not gonna notice it. The tube diameter on a scope. The main thing you get 
with a larger tube diameter scope is it gives you the potential. This is not always what happens, but if the internal optic assembly is the same size with a larger diameter scope, there's more room for it to move. So you can get more travel as far as how far the scope will adjust vertically and horizontally. <laughs> All right, the objective diameter. Now, a lot of guys think if they get a scope that has a huge objective, it's gonna be that much brighter. That's not necessarily true. Light passes through glass. It doesn't flow through like water through a tube. What a large objective does, it allows you to have a larger exit pupil. If the objective is 50 millimeter and it's a 10 power scope, you'll have a five millimeter exit pupil. Objective size is like girth. It's not that big a deal. Ask my wife, she's lived her whole adult life with less girth than normal, she's fine. Or at least I think she's fine. I'm not sure where she's at right now, but, but she says she's fine, so she's fine. Something else way overrated, at least in my opinion, is illumination. Now I know there's situations that illumination could be handy. If you're shooting at a black bear, if you're shooting at a black hog, it's easier to pick it up. But I've never had a time that I've ever thought if that reticle had been illuminated, I'd have got that animal. But your mileage may vary. A zero stop, a lot of guys are looking for scopes with zero stop. The only thing that that does is once you set your scope up for the closer distance, generally 100 yards, you can set the zero stop where you can turn it back and it'll stop and when it stops, you'll be trued up at 100 yards. But it will let you raise the elevation so you can shoot further distance. When you get through, turn it back and it'll stop exactly where you had it. You don't have to keep up with how the numbers lined up or how many revolutions because it's easy to lose count of revolutions. Okay, cap versus exposed turrets. The cap turrets obviously have an advantage because they'll be more weather resistant. About half of my hunting scopes have cap turrets, the other half don't. But then again, I like turrets that lock. Locking turrets are great. They allow you to race up on the turret, turn it, make an adjustment, push it down, and it locks it. They are an ultimate solution. If you wanna have quick, easy to access precision and be able to move the scope easily without having to undo the caps, but you wanna be able to lock it for a little security, that's the way to go. I love locking turrets. Rings and bases, you get what you pay for. I use American Rifle Company rings. They're almost $200 a pair, which is expensive, I know, but they use one screw to bolt the scope down. There's one screw to put it on a Picatinny rail and they don't mark up the damn scope. There's a ton of great rings out there, but none of them cost $19. Holy shit. Length and weight. That's something you really need to be thinking about on your next scope. It's not the end all be all, but it's definitely worth thinking about. Okay, Price, you know your budget, I don't. There's three things Dad always told me are worth the money. Optics, hookers, and liquor. They never let the man down, and I'll stand by that to this day. The rifle scope helps you aim the rifle. The better the rifle scope, the better you're gonna be able to aim, more than likely, the better you'll be able to shoot. And the hookers and whiskey, I mean, that's not even debatable. Now guys, I know I left some stuff out, but do me a favor. For other guys that watch this video at a different time, please leave comments below. You can hit the like button if you want to, but make sure and leave some comments because other guys will be looking in the comments below on this video to see what your input may be. You may help keep somebody from wasting a ton of money. And if you can help these guys by leaving a comment, giving them a few tips, man, it would mean a ton to me and I know they'll appreciate it too.